Good afternoon. Uh, let me begin by saying that this morning I communicated with Mayor Eric Adams that I felt that it was time that the faith leaders and those that deal in the space of these issues, particularly from the spiritual point of view, no matter what religion we practice, no matter where we uh, serve and minister, to really come out and deal with the normalizing of political violence and to really say in the hometown of former President Donald Trump that we no way condone or support any violence against him and his family or his supporters. There is uh, no secret that I've been an adamant opponent of him on many issues. And uh, he and I have debated and fought for 35 years. But violence is wrong. No matter who you are for, we must have a nation that celebrates the diversity of our views and the democracy of our decisions. We cannot settle our political differences with bullets. We settle them with violence. And that is why we wanted to come across different lines of worship, different political lines. We're not going to agree. That's what makes the country work. And if we had been of a different party and a different race, I would call the man. It is a test on all of us if we will play the when we can do it with people we oppose, but saying that we oppose becoming like the people that have been shown opposition in the age in the past. I remember in 1991, in the very early just even the police I was stabbed in a people march in Denver, Brooklyn. So I, when I say I pray for the pre former president to cover his family, I know the trauma here of tasting your own blood. <coughs> and I don't care who you are in public life, your family's traumatized. And it will not end with everybody just saying words. This is something you will never, ever get over. Today, people approach me at airports and places, saying I want to take a selfie, I jump because I still have been this man coming in front of me one. So this is more than politics. This is whether or not we make this country where people don't want to practice in the political process because we normalize violence. So we renounce it for his hometown. We will fight for the issues, but we will not fight about having the safety from the political arena that all of us should have as we participate. And I know no one that has stood for that longer and stronger and our present mayor of the city of New York, Mayor Gatt. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Sharpton. And yesterday, I was clearly trying to find a way to properly express what we're facing as a country. As they were having, Mr. Sharpton reached out and in the spirit of those who are standing behind me, beside me. We are uh, coming from the same place. And I think these uh, elected leaders, as well as the religious leaders, are a fair representation of what we are feeling in our country uh, on the whole. Uh, when a bullet leaves a barrel, it does not have a gun, it does not discriminate. It not only uh, seeks to harm the target, but as we saw yesterday, innocent people are also severely injured and lives out of taken. And there's so many questions that I believe is lingering over us. Uh, what happens when a 20 year old reaches a point where they believe the only way to settle their political differences and disputes is to use a AR-15 or AK-47 or any other form of anger or weapon. That sends a terrible message and it only varies the poll that I see have recorded the last few months that only 18% of 18 to 34 year olds uh, really love America. Uh, we have watched our children rally their lives to a place to be anti everything. And the extremes have basically hijacked what we feel as a country and what we stand for. 
I cannot thank uh, Councilman Burley and Minority Leader enough uh, for understanding how significant this is. We can line up on political lines, uh, but he's a dad, like I'm a pioneer dad. Uh, he loves this city like I love this city. He believes we should raise healthy children and families like I do. And good, healthy debate is part of the democratic process and what it represents. And then when you see Rabbi Patasin and the imams that are here and other faith leaders that are here, every day in the houses of worship, uh, we uh, want to send out a clear and loud message on how do we live together as members of the greatest race of lives, and that's the human race. It was a chilling, chilling visualization as I watched uh, what happened yesterday. Inches away um, from the former president losing his life. It's unimaginable that his children would have to experience that. His wife, uh, those who love him and his family, and those who are politically aligned uh, with him. Uh, to watch that in horror, uh, to see the history of what bullets have done, how it has reshaped our past, and it can reshape our future. Ever since Abraham Lincoln, Dr. King, Ronald Reagan, the families of the Kennedys, Senator and President of Kennedy losing their lives. Mega Evans losing his life. Uh, we're watching how the destructive power of bullet can change the entire direction of our entire country. And I am troubled by some of the even responses we saw from social media on so many different levels. We have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to our young people and our families? And how do we regain them? And I believe it's by doing uh, the accumulation of people who are here today to start with this small group and really put in place a letter that we want to send out and ask everyone to sign on to to stop this toxic violence that we're seeing. Political violence is not how we settle, how we peacefully transfer of power in this country. We have been a living example for the entire globe for the success of this country in its hundreds of years as we're on the eve of the 400th year celebration of how we have managed, even during difficult times, to show who we are as an American. That's why I'm here today. And I'm so pleased that Reverend Sharpton reached out and we're joined by other leaders who are saying the same thing. We must live together, but we must start the process of healing not only our country, but healing our young people. The 20 year old is in possession of an automatic weapon and was willing to use it to take the life of someone who had a political difference with. That is not acceptable. And it's not who we are as a country. It's not who we are as an individual, and it's not who we believe our children should become. There's no place for hate in our city or our country. And I'm going to commit myself to those who are standing here today and those who are not here because they could not make it because of short notice to say we will move our country in the right direction. It starts with us. It starts with us. So again, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us today as we damn every river of the toxic violence that we're seeing so it does not continue to spill over into a sea of violence. We can do it together. Thank you, and I want to call on and now, Reverend A.R. Ruth Bernard, and by him, would be uh, the minority leader of Councilman Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and Sharpton, colleagues and other officials. I'm here as a clergyman. Religion brings a moral value consensus that is necessary for justice. Concord. We speak sometimes with a prophetic voice. And as we look at what unfolded yesterday before our eyes on national television, international television, I couldn't help but think in terms of the rebuke for our nation for its political ideology. We have so-called religious identified people who evoke the name of God as their personal savior and worship politics as their social savior. 
We've got, we've got it wrong. We must restore our moral compass, which is the anchor for the soul of our nation, the soul of our communities, the soul of our families, and our personal souls. Because without a moral anchor, we have nothing to protect us from who and what we become when our humanity runs out. When we're seeing it play out before our eyes. When our humanity runs out, we give them to fear, aggression, violence, and greed. We must reestablish that anchor for our souls individually to the soul of our nation. Our prayers go out for the families affected. And regardless of who you want to win this presidency, we must elevate this to the life and dignity of every universe. We cannot allow ourselves to diminish ourselves as human beings. I'm grateful for the Charlton and the mayor to call a press conference like this to be that prophetic voice. We must change now. Our future depends on it. Our children depend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Two years ago, uh, I had heard that Mayor Adams was interested in getting the DNC to come here to New York City this year. And as soon as I heard it, the first thing I did was I called up Mayor Adams and I texted him. And I called up uh, some of the people and I said, make me a part of this. I want to be a part of this. And people said, well, you're Republican. Why do you want this? Because when things are good for our city, in terms of its economic viability, and when things celebrate our democracy, that's something I want to be a part of. And sometimes people criticize me for that. And I've heard the criticism that as being an outspoken conservative, why do I get along with Democrats in that? I'll tell you what. The truth is, the worst thing I want to happen to them is to lose elections, to lose their jobs. And that's it. I want to be. But that's the worst thing I want to happen to my political opponents. That's anger. I hear things that my political opponents might say. They bother me. Sometimes I think that they'll have a bad impact on my family, our safety, our wallets. And yes, those things anger me. Anger, in and of itself, is not a bad thing in politics. It's what motivated me to go hang flyers and knock on doors as a volunteer. It motivated me to run for office. People who are angry at the system are not the problem in politics. Hate is the problem in politics. The dehumanization of your political opponents is the problem in politics. Anger's been around. Look at the federal state, number 10. Talks about passion, how broken and divided we are. That's anger, not hate. Hate is what causes someone to be so desperate, so desperate to prevent things that they see happening from happening, that they'll fire at a, a man, a grandfather, a father. They'll stop the election by causing that person to die. They'll fire indiscriminately into a crowd of people with children, families, people who are just there because they like the candidate and that was the kind of fun. That's the difference between hate and anger in politics. And when you focus on just using your anger productively and running for office and bettering the community that you want to be a part of, those are positives. And I'm just so thankful that we have a mayor and a religious leaders here. So that level, it's easy to be an analysis in that. I support that. It's more difficult for other people to do that. So I commend anyone who's willing to come out and say, enough's enough, the rhetoric has got to cool. The rhetoric has got to cool. Let's use our anger and our political differences as the founders intended by having debates, by standing on our soapboxes, by offering different ideas, and by encouraging people. When Trump raised his fist, I would encourage you, many of you who I imagine don't, if you like him, or may not vote for him, 
I, I hope you see his raising his fist as a defiant gesture against not the political opponents, but of people who would use violence to silence our democracy. He came out today and said, Unite America. And that's what I believe he meant by shaking his fist and saying, Fight. We have to fight for this democracy. We'll see who wins in November, but we should all fight for this democracy. <laughs> Mayor, I want to thank you for always reminding us that we can believe in our different faiths. We also belong to my human family. When I was growing up, I must confess I never saw a police car in front of a house of worship. But now I do. When I was growing up, I never saw armed officers in front of a house of prayer. But now I do. Inside our houses of worship, we would always proclaim love your neighbor. We didn't say love your democratic neighbor, your Republican neighbor, or any other adjective. We said love your neighbor. And now I see outside of those who proclaim you have to hate your neighbor when you disagree with that person. And very often after hating your neighbor, you have to harm your neighbor. When I was growing up, I remember, as many of you do, we used to say sticks and stones, they break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And now I realize that's wrong. That's not true. Because words often become weapons. And hatred in the heart becomes hatred in the hands. So the psalmist said, guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking God. He was right then. He's right now. Every week in our respective houses of worship, we pray for the country. We say we pray for the President of the United States, no matter who that President is. But today we pray for President Trump's recovery. We pray for a person who lost his life. We pray for two people who are critically injured. We pray for the Secret Service, the FBI, all the protectors who are ready to sacrifice their lives to save lives. History has taught us that tragedy often happens when we are silent instead of shouting. Well, we have to shout as loudly as possible so that we see a day, as the prophet said, what we say on the inside of that sanctuary is what we see on our streets. Thank you very much. Place in peace. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for convening us here today. And I represent the C3 initiative where we're walking the streets and we're praying for our communities and we're speaking against the onslaught of gun violence. The commandment is given to us that we love one another. We are all created in the image of our maker, and whether we like it or not, we're all equal in our lives. And so today I stand, because that could have been one of my students as a 38-year veteran teacher, that could have very easily been one of my students who found themselves being alone in the cafeteria or being ostracized or being set aside and being so isolated and lonely that the only, only recourse was to take out a gun and shoot somebody. And so our responsibility is not just to say I'm Democratic or Republican, but to say that I am God's child and my responsibility is to love. Is, is, is Donald Trump my favorite human being? Absolutely not. The things that come out of his mouth sometimes are inflammatory. But he still is God's creature. And I wish him no ill. And so as we come together as a nation and as a people, my prayer is that if there be no rain, my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. 
Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We pray for a healing in the land. We pray for a coming together. We pray for unity, and we pray for strength. And as we teach our children, we teach our children either to love or we teach them to hate. And that is our responsibility. And I pray that in our country, this beautiful America, the United States, that we teach our children to love and not hate one another. And we who are the cup bearers, the armor bearers, the gatekeepers of hope, that we have a message of love and unity. I believe that Councilman Williams' uh, comment uh, was different between uh, anger and hate is so significant because uh, anger is a motivator. Uh, there are many moments in my life where I was angry when I had the betrayal of the services in the city uh, for a countless number of class people. But it's never turned into hate. And I am starting to see the normalizing of hate uh, that is playing out. Uh, in general, in the city and country, but specifically just talking about young people. Uh, these algorithms, and you heard me talk about them often, uh, these algorithms that are drawing out young people to dark places, uh, these algorithms that are uh, showing violent uh, actions, uh, as the bishop talked about, with the uh, minus we see of young people in our streets. Uh, and how do you take that in and manifest it into uh, constructive uh, ways of doing things. I was angry when I was arrested and assaulted by the police officers. And Reverend Herbie Gordon said, take that anger and have it manifest into something positive. And so I think Councilman uh, Relly's comments are uh, dead on. And it's been clear that clarity is important. Uh, you know, how do we show people to take your anger, take your pain, and turn it into purpose? <coughs> uh, hate allows you to stand on top of the elevated structure point of gun in the direction of an individual and not only uh, threatening his life but the lives of those who also understand. That was an indiscriminate way of saying I have the right to have my hand and take the lives of innocent people. That bullet could have gone outside of that, uh, that stadium, that area. It could have hit anyone walking down the block that may have subscribed to the same political community. So 
when the hate gets in the way, it makes you do things that it's really wrong. And I think I'm coming out of protection. I came from the school of, of being among people. I'm probably one of the most challenging medical issues uh, to have a security detail for. Uh, I don't want uh, my uh, team around me. I don't want them smothering me. I want to be among the people. And I think that even Brother Sharp a couple of days that he was sad. He did not want his people smothering him. He said, there are those of us that never want to live in fear to be in a bubble, but you can't get your right to show your authentic self. And so, uh, the team is going to do their analysis on what needs to be done, uh, but I'm not going to stop from who I am. Uh, I want to be among the people who elect to leave office, and uh, it's going to be the job of the team uh, to you know, be more visual, more vigilant, uh, to look after you know, some of the threats we receive. Um, you, you see what happens. I, you know, I'm sitting on a plane, and some of you walk up on me and you know, use foul language and know foul language about. Those are uh, uh, languages that turn into action. And it happens so quickly. Those of us who are in the public life, uh, it can happen so quickly. You're just walking down the block and someone can see you and all of a sudden you display a level of violence and you just have to be prepared for that uh, and make sure that we act accordingly. And it impacts our family. Every I'm sure uh, the council our family reached out to him. You know, I got a number of calls from my family members. Just please be careful. It wasn't only, uh, that program not only uh, impacted the life of uh, Donald Trump's family, it impacted the life of all of us. Uh, you know, even the speaker talked about some of the threats that she received uh, you know, during her time in office. Uh, you know, we get these threats, and we know that some of these threats can turn into real action, and that is what we have to be uh, prepared for. There is, you, you will never be able to find a quote where I would call for any harm to come to any political person that I disagree with. And I don't call them enemies, we disagree. Uh, I'm protected from the city, and anything that's done that is in the way of safety and ensuring that our city continues to thrive, I'm going to protect that. And I, if I believe the actions of my uh, political opponents and doing something wrong when I talk about it. But it was just last week, I don't know if you remember, but two weeks ago, we were back at the press conference and someone wanted me to respond uh, to an action, I think it was the, um, uh, the bill on uh, reviewing who the, uh, our commissioners were. It's not very clear. Uh, I'm not engaging in this, in this. I'm fighting for the audience. I'm not going to go back and forth. Uh, we need to instill a little bit more compassion into politics. And I say that at the order we play the tapes, I said it then, and I was continuing to say uh, the days of going back and forth with political family uh, is in my living room. I need to fight for New York. That's what I was about to do. I think for two years now, I've been pulled into uh, fighting on some of these issues that it's just not what New York is being. New York is being living in an affordable city, a safe city, educate our children, and raise healthy children and families, and that's my vision for the future. Thank you. Uh, I'm always very careful about what I say, even though it appears that you might be speaking on the truck sometimes. Uh, and, and I also genuinely don't believe all of you have to do my political opponents. So it's not something I feel I need to do. But I think politicians and the media have a dual responsibility to be cognizant that we have influence over a mob mentality, over the mob mentality of someone sees someone doing something. The next person goes to farther and farther and further, and it gets worse and worse. We don't have to be in a mob in some park somewhere. We're on a mob every day when we're sitting on the couch on social media. Mm -hmm. And when we say things that are insightful, um, yes, perhaps they're even taken out of context when the original person spoke to them, but it's too easy on social media to make it compounded. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, if there have been any threats to any local Trump's own properties in the city, and also when you were running, you were talking about carrying a gun. Uh, has that re entered your mindset again? Uh, well, uh, first, uh, there's not been any threats, known threats uh, to the property uh, and the intelligence division, Commissioner Weiner. Uh, would uh, get a briefing and to let uh, 
any income, you did, you did a lot of income uh, that's taken place uh, over and over again. Uh, and as I said, I'm a campaign trainer. Uh, as a former police officer, I'm licensed to carry a weapon. And if it ever reaches that level that I believe I have to, um, then I'll do so. I, I have a good team, a security team right now. Uh, they're doing their job, and I have a lot of confidence in them. I don't feel the need to do so. Uh, and so it's not, it's not the purpose. But I think that's something you said, uh, Councilman, that's important that I hope you can miss. Um, that um, these algorithms and these stories play on the most extreme level of this. If the more volatile you are and the more hate you put out, uh, the more likes you get, the more it feeds into the darkness of us. You know, all of us, have, we have a good mind and a bad mind in us. I got to be a bad mind all the time. Uh, I think it's time to be the good one. Well, let me say, I, I think that there's some in the national scene that have stopped me making it. Out of respect for counsel, I won't get into that. I would just say that all of us need to be very careful when we say uh, we have a Republican convention starting tomorrow, and uh, we should not. One of the things I think that we should be very careful, and I said it on my uh, show this morning, is that we cannot encourage or participate in these conspiracy theories. You have people that have come up with all kinds of conspiracies that we have to deal with. It. We should all support a very thorough, real investigation and not chase or distribute conspiracy theories that somebody gets on TikTok or social media and has all of us avoiding our responsibility and, and not knowing about it. It comes naturally because of what I've been doing. And because you cannot, you know, I came out of, as, as, as a kid, Martin Luther King moving in the other chapters of the world. Dr. King, he said, we cannot become like the things that we're fighting. So I think it was natural to me uh, that when I got early to go and I work out on the back and, and text the man that we need to do this. Because if it's not us who's going to do it, we need to set a contrary tone. And then reaching out to you know, Reverend Bernard and others, I thought it was important. And then you have people like Bishop that walks the street and their mom. All of us have different roles. All of us do things differently, but none of us should be silent in the face of conflict. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.